DJs and not jukeboxes, episode 12. We are back. We got a full house with us. Squad is in here. Squad, squad. What up? Um, as always, first off, thank you to all of our listeners, supporters, subscribers. Um, please do share. Tell your friends about us. Join the discussion. Hit that subscribe button. We do appreciate you guys. As always, we're not here without you. Uh, so let's uh, go around the room, introduce ourselves, and then uh, we'll get right into today's topic. My name is DJ Sen, Mr. Sen, Mr. Beer Butter, whatever. Uh, my name is Artist, a.k.a. <laughs> <laughs> we edit that in post. <laughs> <laughs> DJ True. It was. Hey, so um, this is a very in-house discussion. No guests needed for today. Um, it's something that we've all gone through. It's something that we all deal with regularly and will continue to deal with. Um, and I think it's a great discussion. And it's something that we all talk about on a regular. And let's bring it to light. So today's topic is the want versus need concept. And in our world specifically, what we want as far as being creatives and artists and um, essentially what we need to live and to maintain out here. Mm -hmm. Um, Two very different worlds. (laughs) Um, So I kind of want to lead in with with the idea of the lead in and just start with uh, going around the room and talking about everybody's kind of decision, that main decision that got you there. You know, we all I know for me, real quick, it was, um, you know, I've always known I wanted to do music, didn't know at what capacity, um, you know, started DJing when I was 18, but I also had a day job at 18. Right, what, you what did you do? Um, I was a, a data analyst, so I was a quality assurance trainer at a market research firm for like seven years, from, so basically from 18 and then on. Dang. And then, yeah, <laughs> and then right after that, um, I became the data analyst over there at the same company. Uh, so while my friends were in college doing the whole college thing, I already had a corporate gig and was making corporate salary money. <laughs> so I kind of skipped the line in that sense, you know, moved on up. Oh yeah. My friends yeah. were all partying and doing the college thing. And like, I was like just working these crazy hours. You know right. I mean? Right. So, um, and shout out to my, my parents, they put work ethic in me early, you know, I, I had like summer jobs and shit like that. I didn't necessarily get oh, to like my parents. Thanks mom and dad. Yeah. I didn't necessarily I'm get to, I did summer camps a couple times, but then my pop was like, yeah, you're going to come work with me at the Photoshop. So <laughs> shout out to that. Um, but yeah, no, and then all the, like, what was it? 13 years later, you know, um, I, I got offered a position to do a, uh, a program for, this thing called the arts incubator at the university of Chicago Mm. and uh, shout out to King one. And um, and that basically was the decision where I had to leave my day job in order to do this because it was during the day. It would have been Monday through Friday type thing. It wasn't promised. It was a 10 week program. What was your day job like? And just in a nutshell, like, Uh, I mean, how would you, how would you describe it to your, you know, your, your energy? Just time consuming. Yeah. Very time consuming. But that was before I started understanding how to use that day job and what that day job did for me. Right. You know what I mean? So that was kind of my decision. Um, you know, I had wanted to get out of there for years. Um, but, you know, I, after I had gone from the fuck this place, you know, I don't deserve, you know, I don't belong here and all that. And then it was like, wait, well, this all taught you this music career that you're doing. Like, not the creative talent side of it mm-hmm. like the craft side of it like how to maneuver in business like I was talking to managers at clubs and you could like you could just go to places and like kind of scout them for yourself and like, try to get a gig mm-hmm. um, I was doing that and like just going to spots and like showing up and like finding out who was who and they were like you look super young but like you, you talk a really solid like business game and I was like yeah you know I got this day job and that's when like I was like oh shit let me respect this the space that I'm in, you know, and that's when things started changing, you know, and then it took about three or four years of actually living that, not just trying to think that before I was actually able to get that. And then, yeah, I had, I sat on it for like two or three weeks, had to figure it out. And, you know, like I said, it was a 10 week program. So like, if it worked, it was going to keep going. If it didn't, it wouldn't. Yeah. (laughs) Essentially, you know, it ended after those 10 weeks, but I woke up one day, I was get in the shower getting ready for work, and I just was like, I'm quitting my day job today. And I said it out loud, I was like, holy shit, I just fucking said that. Like, <laughs> I'm quitting my day job. And it was, I was 30, you know, 
or 31 at that time. I mean, it's going on four years now that I've been doing this full time. Hmm. So um, that was it was crazy, man. It was it was a wild decision. But everybody at my job already knew that I was like going there, you know. And like I think my respect for that position and like understanding, like okay, cool, like I'm here, so let me just respect this because I didn't like half-ass the job. I was always right. like, I always made sure I like you know fulfilled what I had to do and. I had my name on the line still, but so because of that, they allowed me to like, you know, if I had to like make phone calls, like I know a lot of times, like I started working with, you know, True a lot at that time. So I'd be on the phone with him during the day, you know, he'd be doing his business, you know, during the day already. You were in that full-time life. You were once somebody that was always like, hey bro, uh, so yeah, you're gonna need to quit your day job, bro. I need some more time out here. <laughs> you know, and it was just like hearing that from enough people. Yeah. Of course you want to do it, but then, you know, like there's a security, blanket side of it they like, don't necessarily know if it's possible yeah no or like, how far you could take it yeah if the dream is actually can become a reality yeah so that was that was my like leading decision on that. yeah uh i think for me it, it probably happened uh during college i when i, when I came when i went into college i initially was a was a bio major mm. and uh like yeah what? ian <laughs> with the wild problematic thoughts yes. uh, no, it was, no I mean to be fair yeah to be fair I was, I was trying to be uh, I was I was trying to be an optometrist oh nice so, shit I, I mean it wasn't tight though because I hated it <laughs> I, I had thoughts of going into pharmacy for a while so I ah yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I worked in a pharmacy when I was young so, so Ian's basically trying to be I was going to go Asian culinary that was my whole thing like before I got into the tech show. I was wild problematic for him but anyways <laughs> <laughs> but uh no nah, yeah I mean um, yeah I was initially a bio major and did, like I was in school for that for like three and a half years until like I realized I hated it I was like I was like constantly failing I was like that kid that like when it would show all the grades on like the uh, projector or whatever like the uh, the ratios like Oh man, you like you see like the highest and lowest. So like I was like, oh, who got the lowest? It was like a thirty-seven out of hundred. And and then when I got my paper, it ended up being me. Funny enough, so I was like, oh, oh shoot. So it was kind of like like those three and a half years. I think like the first year was cool, but then like the, the the following two years was a constant like <laughs> depressing like oh shit. Where'd you go to school? I went to uh, Roosevelt and uh, UIC for this. Oh, right. So like it got to the like it got to I reached a breaking point. You know, I was like. I was, you know, kind of DJing at the time. I was still kind of like learning and messing around in my bedroom, and um, so I, I knew I couldn't really like. I, I for, for some reason I felt like I didn't wasn't fully prepared to do that, uh, like on my own or just like uh, full time rather. So I ended up like thinking I should probably just you know pursue something creative again, like go back to the visual like arts. So I was always into photography, but like I wanted to do more something more you know just than just shooting. So I decided to go through design, and that's where I am at now. So. I'm a graphic designer and uh you know i'm also djing here and there too on top of that but yeah it's funny though because like even though even though i'm in a creative field you get to do the most like mundane and corporate shit though depending what direction you go so like that's kind of like the the one thing that i've been kind of like learning about myself is that even though the two things i'm doing are like generally creative like my want is to do those creative things as opposed to the things that are necessary within those lanes you know what i'm saying yeah Yeah. so that's kind of like my ongoing you know struggle (laughs) with my my day-to-day honestly very much in the same boat man (laughs) for the same reasons Um, yeah (coughs) yeah my thing what's that i was gonna say i was talking about that well, no, just like real quick, my thing, I, th- I feel like I've talked about it in past episodes, but like initially my thing was architecture. Um, mm. Tight. And is dope. straight out of high school, I was able to work in a building systems engineering firm that worked with a ton of architects, obviously. Um, so they, they knew that this is a connection through Boy Scouts, mind you. So, uh, <laughs> yo, I'll take it back even further. Yeah. Finding it, man, we're really gonna find yeah, out about yeah. the real true right now. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to in house episodes, though. <laughs> but, yeah, right? <laughs> the most interesting guest. No, nah, but, um, yeah, one of, the, one of the leaders was part of this engineering firm. He knew I was into computers and he was like, yeah, come in and work for us. Like, he knew I was into architecture too. Um, so I helped them start their, their CAD, their computer drafting department. This is like when that was like becoming a, a big thing mm. to kind of 
uh, put it in a time perspective. Um, and then through that, was able to work with an interior design firm doing the exact same thing. So it was like getting a taste of that whole world, like the corporate side of the des- you know interior design and building design and yeah. the the creative things that drew me to architecture. Um, but being able to work in that field and see what was really going on, like it's not it's not the same. Yeah, some things don't ever pan out the way they look. Basically, <laughs> totally not the same. Seriously. And you know, it's like you know they they were being creative and. You know, designing these you know big office spaces in DC, but that wasn't the kind of architecture that I wanted to be uh, to be involved in. So I was like, "Fuck it!" No, what did you I'm want gonna to leave? leave. <laughs> what, what, like, yeah, what, what kind of architecture yeah. did you want to go into? It was like residential, but like um, like high end residential. Yeah, where you have a budget to right. work with and get to do things that are you know Great. more lavish and yeah, design right. centric so well, that makes sense like yeah. like you knew a lot of spots like you just know a lot of spots like a lot of dope spots so that makes sense like your eye for it is there yeah and that's what drew me to chicago was that makes a lot of sense. Right. yeah that's and the music but like the choice to come out here was very spur of the moment and i was i was comfortable just working you know just like a like an hourly nine to five wage job just to not be doing corporate shit anymore. Um, but as soon as I discovered that I could get hired to DJ for four hours, get paid a few hundred bucks, I was like, why am I sh- doing, <laughs> yeah. why am I working 40 hours a week to make if that, you know? So yeah. I was like, fuck it. This is possible. This is the good city to do it in. And then just dove right in. And then ever since then, it's just been a learning experience, I guess. To say the least. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. What about you, Ian? Yeah, I mean, my, my, just, my story is kind of this, similar to everybody else's. Like, I went to college um, and, uh, like, got a, got a degree, went to work in corporate America for a couple years after school. Um, corporate America. Yeah, man. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I worked uh, in, like, a healthcare company <laughs> for, like, a year. Um, and then I worked for Cars.com in downtown Chicago for like a year and a half, and I was DJing throughout that whole time. Um, and uh, when I was at, at Cars.com, that was when I really started to DJ a lot more in like bars and clubs, and shows and stuff, and started to like make a little bit of name for myself in the Chicago scene, I guess. And um, uh, I was basically trying to plot my exit. Like I knew I didn't want to do that forever. Um, and then I got my first like legit residency in Chicago, which was a tonic room hey. on Fridays. And this is like, <clears throat> oh God, like eight years ago, maybe nine years ago. Um, and once that happened, I did that for a couple months and I was planning it out. I was like, all right, like I, I was doing the math and it was like, okay, like I made okay money at the corporate job. But it was like some entry level, like basically, it was like basically a step above data entry. It was like, um, I was doing like non-tech, technical tech support. Like I didn't really know shit about computers, but like, they, you know, I knew about their system that advertisers would use or whatever. So it was all, there was nothing like, you know, basically a monkey could do my job. So yeah. it was not anything that I wanted to continue in. Um, and so I was like plotting out. I like was, was planning for a few months ahead. I had a little bit of money saved and I was like, fuck it, like this one residency, you know, if I get nothing else for the month, I can at least like pay my rent. That's it. Right. This is before I was married, before I had a family, all this. Um, I was like living with like a couple of the dudes, like paying like three hundred bucks a month in rent. Ooh. Like I was just like, fuck it, man. Like this is. And I, I I remember like taking my mom to lunch and telling her that I was gonna leave my job, and she was like, yes, do it. And I was like, you know what? This That's is. Dope. Yeah, my mom, my parents have always been super supportive. That's super like, nice. Super supportive. That's dope. Yeah, I was just worried, you know, that I was like, yeah, you know. But um, I told her, I was like, and I told my boss the same thing when I when I told him I was leaving. I was like, I'm always going to look back on this moment in my life and be like, this is the time where I should have left. And if I didn't, if I don't do it now, I'm going to be like kicking myself for the rest of my life. Right. Did you do the, uh, the half big fuck you, fuck I you? I did not. Um, <laughs> the thing was like, I, my, my job at Cars, like, the job itself was like whack, but I, there was a lot, I worked with a lot of people my age. Everybody was like 21 to like 30. It was a dope place to work. Um. So I, I, I definitely did not like the job, but the people that I 
worked with was super cool. I still hang out with a lot of them to this day. Nice. Um, but I told my boss, he was like, totally, like, I'm, I'm with you. So, um, yeah, like, and then I, I was, you know, had my first legit residency. Shortly after that, I got my roof on um, lit residency, which was my first really big deal. And then I was like, okay, like, I'm, you know, okay. I'm, I'm decent enough with money where I can, like, actually make a living with this. So. Yeah. So it seems like everybody had those beginning gigs like you said tonic room was that one for you yeah. where you're like okay i could do this you mentioned it you know the uh the idea of like man i can make all of this money in this little time and and you know and it's actually something that i love doing versus um you know trying to be in this space that you know for whatever reason you don't want to be there all the time um i know like for me i started uh Shout out to my homie JJ. He got me involved with like the whole ginseng crew at the time, and uh, and J Funk. So I was getting like all the downtown gigs. So I was working Wednesday through Saturday and still working the day job. So and and everybody's in agreement that we were all playing and working at the same time. Yep. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, used come, in, right? I used to come in fucking hungovers. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Of, you know, okay. On God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So there. So my. Yeah. I started at seven o'clock in the morning, and I'd work till like four or five. Yeah. And I was a data analyst by the time I was in the position of like these downtown gigs and shit. So that's when I was really like, okay, like, I, I'm that. It took me those few years. I didn't. I mean, I got good. You know, decent money for my first gigs, but I wasn't like, all right, I could do this because my corporate gig was paying me so much I was like man I, I like this is that security blanket that this is you know I, I had created a lifestyle around that check you know yeah, what see, I mean? mine, mine was different mine like I did not make a lot of money and honestly like I remember when I was in cars like looking at the people that just that was their job and I was like how are you even like surviving on this because like I need like I needed like and back then again my I like was paying nothing for bill like, compared to what I like pay now it's like ridiculous and like I remember oh, yeah. just being like man like I would not be living a very good life if I just worked here and didn't make DJ money yeah right well, I, was, I, I, I definitely was not making like decent corporate money at all like I'm, again my shit was like entry level and I got lucky because the job that I got into was all like degree required and everything but they hired me from within yeah. like they just bumped me up into a different department because they needed somebody and I already was there for seven years doing, you know, the QA shit. Right. So they were like, all right, can you do this? And they trained me for like two days. And I was like, yeah. And then, you know, they're like, all right, this is going to be your salary if you want to take the job. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but that completely switched my shit because when I made that shift in that job, I also got all these gigs. And that's where that Wednesday through Saturday block happened. And there was a time where like, I couldn't even remember where I was at half the time. But I wasn't like I wasn't even hung over half the time either. It was just the lack of sleep, yeah, and the lack of like just time and awareness was just crazy. So I started having that thought about like the money, and I want to kind of talk about that, like that whole security blanket aspect, because that's a big thing. That's I think for me at least was the the one thing that held me back for so long, but also put me in the right spot to do it when I did, you know, right. because I, I think if I would have made the jump earlier I wouldn't have been ready like mentally for it you mm. know what I'm saying like yeah man like <laughs> it's every life decision I've ever made has just been jumping into something really <laughs> yeah that's when I think about it like um I think that's the only way I made this happen in Chicago yeah was by at first yeah and I think that's why it works for me cause I know I don't have that like that security blanket to, mm. you know, to like rely on anymore. Um, and it's weird, like uh, anytime like I hit like a bad financial spot or something, I just like zone into it somehow. And like, I don't know, it's weird. It, it doesn't like take me off track the way that it should, I guess. Yeah. Um, cause then when it ends up happening is like, I start opening up to all these possibilities and opportunities mm -hmm. and then just start putting effort into, into those things or what those could be. And then it ends up boiling up into something. Right? Yeah. I think like so, that whole state of yeah. mind creates state of living. Right. It's very sure. real. And, you know, I feel like, um, that removal of the security blanket for me was the one that definitely taught me that because my biggest fear was going broke. 
Like, that was my right. biggest fear because, For sure. again, like, the age of 18, I had gotten the corporate gig that all my friends are just getting into college to try to get. So I felt like, oh, shit, like, I came up. And, like, I didn't have... It, I, luckily, I didn't have enough ego at that time to be like, yeah, fuck it, yeah. You know, like, I was like, okay, cool, I'm blessed. I'm, like, I'm grateful to be in this position. Cool. But then the ego kicked in when the career of the music started following me more. And I was like, man, fuck this. Like, I don't need this. This place isn't for me. Why the fuck am I here? And I just became right. real, just, like, just, like, aggressive and, like, like arrogant and just very ego-driven for no reason. You know what I mean? And I was, like, very outside of what I who I am now, especially, you know, and like at that point when things weren't going my way, you know, like in, within the, the day job and career shit, I started having to like slow my shit down. Like, yo, bro, like, yo, like where the fuck are you right now? Right. Where are you right now at this very moment? Don't worry about where you think you should be. Cause that's what it was. I was always concerning myself. Like I should be here. I should be here. Fuck that. Like, no, you're where you should be where you're at. Like, Technically, like, you know, that's a whole different conversation. But, you know, like, without wormholing it too much, like, when I got to the point of leaving the day job, and I did, and then a year after that, I went completely broke. My car got fucking repoed. Like, I mean, I had to sell DJ equipment. Like, my my 62, you know, shout out to Blackbird. She's got she's got my shit still. You know, I, she bought it. You know, she did me that favor. And it's like, I that happened, and then I got past it. And I was like, oh, word, like there's this whole other life. So that whole conversation of like the possibilities and like just yeah. letting go of that, like that one thing. Because, bro, I didn't realize how mentally conditioned I had been to 13 years of every two weeks. No, I think every two weeks on a Friday. I think I that's how check. everyone's conditioned to think life's going to be like just in my chase account. Like week. shit's going to be guaranteed. Yeah. And it's even in even in like a, a corporate situation it's never guaranteed. Like nope, right. no, no, layoffs never. happen. Right. Just so this is just like but by doing it this way, like you take that that risk into your own hands, mm -hmm. you know, and it gives you some semblance of control. Um, and then with the benefit of like doing something for yourself definitely like yeah. creating a life for yourself i think the, the the most clear moment of me having that recently was uh when you offered me or when you told me that there was an opening for react and i was like i was like i, I was working that that corporate ass job well, especially I was say yeah you were working like a normal corporate job and then something cooler yeah you know, yeah like so man yeah i mean what i was saying earlier like you know, there's a creative side to everything but like not mm -hmm. all creative things are creative <laughs> mm -hmm. so that 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 that's ba that was basically that job. I was like working like a super corporate, uh, like marketing firm. They would they had like big name clients like Verizon, whatever, whatever. But you'd basically be cutting like creating the same thing over and over again every day. And it was getting to the point where I'd be getting there at, like I would start at nine, but I'd be getting there like at ten thirty, and they wouldn't say shit. <laughs> I was also I was also driving from Chicago to like an outside suburb, so it was like yeah, it was like it's a little bit much, but. Yeah, it, it was it was beginning to wear on me to the point where I was like, man, do I even like designing? It got to that point mm. where I was like, mm. was not even feeling what I was doing anymore. Even with DJing too, like I was like, I think the, like everything was getting kind of like stale at that point, and I just needed to like really dive in. So yeah, when 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 uh, Nigel was working at React, uh, he told me that there was an opening for designer gig, and like immediately sent my portfolio, and maybe like within like <laughs> a week and a half, I got the gig. So mm. it was crazy. So now you're like, yeah, now I'm dude over you're there. You're that guy, bro. So <laughs> like, now I'm holding dude. it down. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, shout out to them. But uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, like that jump, that jump alone kind of, uh, I felt like it, it expanded me creatively again. Like I found, I retapped into that. Like how long ago was that? This was like a, a year and a half ago now. So that's pretty recent. Pretty recent. Yeah. Like how long you've it's been It's pretty recent because I haven't really felt like this creatively invigorated, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, since like college, I think, because like when I made that jump from biology to like design, like everything was like really opening up and I was like beginning to like hone in on like something I haven't really tapped before. Like the only, the only way I tapped myself creatively was just through music and like through DJ. Mm. But, uh, I was always into art. So I like always wanted to get involved in that. So that's basically why, but like, yeah, that <laughs> I, if, if I didn't take that, I, I probably would be like 40 pounds heavier and still like. What a shitty back and like <laughs> been one of the, designing the same fucking email. You would have been like again. one of the characters that they create on South Park. Yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah, it would have been like The Office, basically. 
Oh, but, man. That's crazy, man. Not, saying, not to say that I could have just, you know, kept that 40 pounds if I wanted to. But, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, yeah, like, it, it, opened, it opened a lot of doors. And, like, you got to take that risk sometimes. And it's like... You know, it, it, it is, I think like when you when you're faced with like real big decisions like that, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're always gonna be on, you're always gonna be you know generally uncertain, you know, and mm-hmm. but like you gotta like you gotta have that one little spark in your head like to tell you to push, you know, yeah. just you know just mm-hmm. go for it because especially if everything is like shitty at that moment, I feel like if if there's like <laughs> there's a lot of shittiness around you and you see like a little like glimmer, you you know you would just generally go to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I made an interesting connection in my head when you were just talking right now. Like you, uh, you said, you know, you, you haven't been this creatively invigorated since college. Yeah. Um, I've personally been finding myself reverting heavily to just how I used to be in high school, just as just in general, like just being open to shit and just being less, uh, like taking less of life personally. You know what I mean? Like, not taking everything that happens just so, like, ah, uh, uh, you know, just letting be, m- there be more balance. So, I was definitely that kid in high school who took everything personally, though. And see, I didn't. <laughs> I was definitely, like, the opposite. I just kind of let stuff go. And, and it's funny, and the reason I say this is because um, the whole idea of, like, you know, these decisions that we make, we're always kind of told um, that there's a right and a wrong way. Like, you have to be an adult about this. You know what I mean? And I feel like my reversion to being in high school and shit and like you know like i, I mean i don't i don't I, I used to like love the sneaker culture and all that shit and all i wear is like a couple pairs of bands now and like that's again i dress how i did in high school and just this whole shit and the point is is that like i feel like since i've let go of that society version of like this is responsible like like i am responsible you know what i'm saying like i i can still have fun in what I do and still be responsible at the same time. I think there's a big stigma around that. And I had a conversation with someone a couple of days ago and this is where it comes from. They were like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, they're like, what are you looking like this weekend? I'm like, oh, I gotta work all weekend. Oh, that sucks. I'm like, no, like, no, like, what are you doing next week? Well, I mean, I gotta work, you know, the, the, the warehouse shit during the day. And then, you know, I got this and working this and they're like, man, all you do is fucking work, man. I'm like, damn, that, that, that gotta suck. I'm like, but no, but like I like what I do, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I mm-hmm. really, really genuinely like what I do, so it really doesn't suck. So like I feel it's dope because at that time when I was younger, I was very open to shit. You know, like I was playing guitar heavily, like I heard music a certain way, like I was able to be creative a certain way. I didn't put a, a, a like a, a block on myself, you know, and then you get older and then you create this block for yourself within what is supposed to happen. Sure. The whole want versus need and it, it comes from the need like we all obviously need money we all need that you know? there's some type of stability that we have to create yeah. but now like like I would have never in a million years saw myself doing this full time but then like having all these little hustles that I do like the warehouse shit that I do during the day like nobody knows that I do that but I'm very proud of it like it's cool like whereas like before I'd have been like the same thing like I don't like I deserve better I deserve this exactly like no I like you're just doing what you do like I have people tell me like oh you do so many like different things you're so involved with so many different things I I I just kind of do the things I want to do there's a flow there's a certain flow that you find and then like I feel like once you find that flow and once you connect mm -hmm. to that flow everything makes sense because I didn't understand like my six or seven years as a, a quality assurance trainer would end up translating to me being a fucking pretty solid teacher with music and DJing. Like being in front of people, teaching them and training them for this job that they're about to jump into essentially mm-hmm. honed me to do that. Yep. And you know, find myself at scratch and doing all this shit yep. and teaching something I actually wanna fucking teach and believe in, you know? Yep. And then who knew that 13 years of that corporate world would essentially bring it here? You know, like we had our, our, our data moment where you were like, what? And I was like, oh my God, I see these numbers. And you're like, dude, you know data like that? And I'm like, yeah, this is what I did for seven fucking years, you know? I looked at numbers all day and like created graphs and all this shit. And it's like, that's dope. Cause now it took all these years later for me to understand it and to make that connection. But like now that I did, I fully respect that whole chapter of my life, you know? And like all of that taught me 
these like skills, you know, like for this creative world. Like, did you guys have any type of like skills that you guys picked up in particular, maybe from the 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 day job world that you kind of took over, or maybe vice versa? Uh, yeah, shit in the private bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. yes. Oh my God. Shout out, hey, but no real <laughs> shit though. When we when I got into the data world, we had our own floor. So shout out to those personal yeah. bathrooms. Because those <laughs> long ass days, shit. There there was a bathroom next to my office that we were we weren't generally allowed to use, but like I used that shit. It was it was like it was like mainly for like people visiting like the office. It was like like who's in this line of work that's visiting this office in like the middle of fuck of Naperville basically. So it's just like. <laughs> yeah, also a shout out to living in Chicago and driving to the suburbs because the first job I had out of college, I did that. I worked in Walmart. Yeah, yeah, man. Oof. Mm. Yeah. Nothing, mm. nothing more like that's the one thing too with that. With that, like, fuck long commutes. Yeah. Let me, let me just put this out here. Yeah. <laughs> that shit will suck you dry from any creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You used to have some. Yeah. Used to have some like you have all these thoughts on the way there. It's like yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. But when you when you finally get home, you're like fuck. <laughs> no, I want to do shit. Yeah, winter, man, fucking 30 below. Yeah, like, man. Like, like, oh, I'm really gotta get my ass out of bed right now and drive an hour to go to oh, a job yeah. that I hate. Like, no. Yeah, really. that it's, whole. No, thank you. Yeah. That whole mental aspect, too. Like, it, it, you know, I think that, for me at least, too, like, that uh, conditioned me for, you know, getting to that point where I went broke and, like, was able to just say, like, fuck it, it happened. It is what it is. Let's just keep moving. You know yeah, definitely. Because you. You're constantly in this state of waking up. Like you said, like how how many times did we all do it? Like now when I wake up and if I have that day, like, I'm like, fuck, I'm tired. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Like you're about to go do a bunch of shit that you love doing. Shut the fuck up. And, and that's it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, duh. And then I just, I snap out of it. Cause it's that quick moment of like groggy. I'm just still tired in that moment of waking up. But yeah, man. I mean, I had a lot of, man, I, I spent years doing that shit and like, it's so unhealthy, you know what I mean? It ends up being very unhealthy. And, you know, I, I, there's a lot of people that have told me too, like, man, you know, well, you you had it easier or like, you know, you were just, you know, given the opportunities or you did it because you can do music and blah, blah, It's like, nah, man, like, I don't really believe in that. Like, I, 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 I truly... Everybody's got some shit that they and, could turn into a profession. Yeah, yeah man. Like, any, anybody's got... I mean, just the same way everybody's creative. Like, that whole conversation of problem solving comes from the creative side of your brain. We're all creative. So, like, you don't have to be creative to get that job. But, like, everybody maybe has the ability to go find... Maybe you know how to... Create a comedy? No, Creative man. again? Yeah, no, it's just like... And people have skills that they can apply. The, the skill set that you apply at your job could become the skill set you apply for your own business. Mm. Yes, and every, for yourself. everybody has the ability to go do something that makes them happy. There's just this fear aspect that comes with it, and I feel a lot of times it's money driven. You yeah. know, I mean, I mean, sure. I mean it's, and, and it's understandably so. I mean, we live in, an ex, I mean, especially in Chicago, like how fucking is expensive is it to live out here? Yeah. Like it's mad. Well, prices. then it's like, how much do you trust your that skill that you want to, you know, capitalize right. on right. to support right. your life, you know? Right. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, like, for sure. me, like, I, like, I, I went, I went to college and all that. I have a degree, but I'm basically unemployable at this point. Like, I have not had a day job in almost nine years. Mm. So, those thoughts are definitely starting to cross my head. Like, when this music shit ends, or at least the DJing, like, when that, you know, because there's nothing lasts forever. Like, what am I going to fucking do with my life? Like, I have no idea, honestly. You said you had a psychology degree? How do you? You Which should start a psychology company well, or whatever. I have to fucking go back to school. PTSD like for, like, for, like, for, for retired musicians. For DJs, yeah. For retired like, musicians. Yes. But the, the whole thing with that <laughs> Dude, is, is like, yo, <laughs> you just created your business no, tonight. No, that means I have to go back to school for like four more years. Um, <laughs> Do it for the community, man. Come yeah. on, man. Do it for the culture, bro. I can't imagine learning anything at this point in my life. Except for, like, engineering, like, DJ, like, music engineering, which I've been super into. Like, for anything I feel like I would have to go back to school for at this point, like, it's, like, laughable. Like, yeah. Like, me sitting in a Because it's such a different world. Dude, there's no way. Like, there's no way. Like, and, and the thing is, like, I, I feel like a lot of DJs or musicians are, like, creative in something else. You know what I mean? Like, you're a really fucking dope graphic designer. Like, you have a really, you know, like, 
I did this. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of DJs like, or musicians like, do video stuff or like, you know, something else creative. Like, I never really got, I, I really have nothing else as an outlet other than music. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So DJ is the one, thinking. Yeah, DJ is the one thing I've been okay at in my life, and that's once that ends, I have no fucking clue what I'm gonna do. What about like everything you've you've gained from being a DJ, your know, whole DJ career, and even the music production side? Right. I mean, well, that's the thing is like I'm I'm hoping to get in, you know more into like well, I am getting into more like engineering and mixing and mastering and stuff like that, but. Shit, I mean, if that doesn't pan out, that's also like more of a grind than DJing is because, you know, those are hours put into Well, that, that, and unless you're like the top, you know, 2% of mixer or mastering engineers, like you're really not making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, again, at this point, like, it should never all be all about money. Not right. No, I mean, for anything, anything, but for us, it's definitely not because, I mean, we've, we've all been in it. I mean, I'm, I'm considered the rookie, I think, in the whole, like, full-time uh, aspect of it um but you know like i mean it was great like when i jumped into it like you know i know you and jason in particular like you guys like welcomed me and we're like finally and then like right after that it was like okay cool here welcome now this is like what our circle does this is how it works yeah <laughs> pretty much but like dude like if it wasn't for nigel like no bullshit like that first year like kept me afloat like he was like all right cool these are some gigs that i got available this is what i can do for you like i'll set you up here and it was like you know all the taco joint shit all the all that stuff like all of that kept me there and it was like okay cool there was this like the the you know, all those little fears that you have are like, they're, they start subsiding because you're like, oh shit, like, people are watching what you did and then like, they're oh, like they're waiting for you. It was like, man, bro, it was, it was really, really dope. It was very like humbling and it was like, all right, cool. Now, it also helped me hustle a certain way too because it's like, yo, you got people looking out for you. Now it's like, yo, now they're putting their name behind you as well. It's not just you. So like, it's a whole different thing. So, right. you know, and then like, now we're all here as like, you know, DJs in that jukebox and it's like I feel that's the the perfect organic representation of like all these years that we've all done and this conversation that we're having right now you know what I mean like what we've done and what we're starting to do here and you know even that like we're a few years in already with what we do and just from the beginning stages of it to now like all of like the, the marketing shit you know we're getting into the or the media shit I should say you DJ know, City. Shout out to DJ yeah. City. DJ Hookup. Yeah, shout out to DJ Hookup. You know what I mean? Like, all of that. Like, like I didn't see myself doing this. You know what I mean? Like, I, I have to... I Every day, like, when I lay down at night, like, I'm just incredibly thankful. You know, and there, there's, like, a lot of spiritual aspects and life shit that had to happen, too, for me to get to this point. But, like, I'm just so incredibly thankful that, like, I have these opportunities to, like spread this energy of like yo you could do this too it's not even about like me and we've had those talks like where it's just bigger than us you know what i mean like we all know that we all work that way because we're all here together right but like fuck dude like just being so incredibly thankful that like like my hair stand up on my arms when i talk about it now because it's like this is a dream that i've been wanting to do but i never saw it like this you know and then when you realize like yo you're actually living a fucking dream like mm -hmm. like yeah, it's never how you dreamt it. Never, ever yeah. how you saw sure. it to be, but, like, man, is it, like, when you realize that you're actually yes. in it, it's fucking amazing, man. Like, I mean, I know everybody here has accomplished some amazing things doing this shit. Like, we've all shared some amazing stages with, you know, mentors of ours, people we've looked up to, you know, won titles. You know, I'm sitting in a room with two champions, you know what I mean? Fucking world champion type shit. Like, not just, like... Yo, like, they won at the little five-hour pitcher bar the other night. Like, you know, no diss to those upcoming DJs, because keep doing that shit. You got to start somewhere. I'm not, mm -hmm. trust me, I'm not saying that. That's not where I'm going. Like, go battle it the <laughs> fuck out. Get your name out there. Promise that. But, like, this is Red Bull. This is, you know, like, fucking DMC scratcher shit. Like, these right. are big, big entities in our culture. And we are representatives of that, man. And it's like... That's why I get to go to sleep very grateful because I'm like, yeah, my fucking squad, my family is part of this shit. You know what I mean? And I'm like, 
I like I, I get to be part of this shit, you know? Like whatever I did got me here. Right. You know, I don't question it anymore. I'm just like, cool, I'm here. So let me just keep adding to it. Like however I'm I can. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, so last thing I kinda wanna talk about is time management. Cause that's a big, big thing. Shit. Here. We're talking about why are we doing time management at the end? That's what I would like. <laughs> no, There you go. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. We obviously have things to talk about. <laughs> Yo, yo. But then it's, 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 I, again, that's a perfect fucking like example of like our lives right there. I feel like I was just barely setting up for this recording. I I did some dishes and shit. Cause I had work today. You know, yeah. it's just you know everybody was coming in from there. You came straight here. You came straight here. You came straight here. Yep. It's just one of those things where like we all live what we talk. So I think Juan said it or revise Juan. We're by CMW. Yeah, yeah from one camp. Yeah. I'm not sure how we referred to him in the interview. Yeah, he's got like four um, names in there. So. That dude. That guy. Um, the shop guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he said it best. He won like, second this weekend, by the way, right? He came no. in. Uh, yeah, second yeah, the live art show. Yeah. yeah. Um, yo, on the canvas. Yeah. He yes. He sh- he sh- Shout out to all the few guys in here. That shit was wrong. His, his, his piece yeah, was he's insane. insane. Uh, no, he said it best. It's just, it's keep a calendar and like, mm actually a lot your time to what you're gonna be doing i mean that's that's the only way i figure out the yeah way I, I know work. <laughs> yeah shout out to because you're doing shit all the time yeah so you have to make it all work somehow definitely i've recently uh, adopted the reminder system on my phone so i'm like that's been my brain lately just trying to i'm getting shit done because if, if i don't write that shit down it's not getting done yeah <laughs> but uh man i know heads that like like they they work like day gigs but they devote like they wake up a little bit earlier in the day just to devote like maybe like 30 minutes just to practice mm-hmm. yeah. so getting that you know even if it is even if you could devote like an hour or like just like, 10 minutes just to practicing totally. like a day that'll like that's better than no practice at all yeah so, I, I remember like that's the way i see it like i can't oh, I, I don't i never have my shit scheduled but if i could at least fit like a, you know a little like bit consciously in. put yeah. that effort yeah. towards yeah. yeah it makes a big difference i remember when i was in college uh and i i was really excited to get out of college to actually work a scheduled nine to five job because i knew that every day when i got home i could fucking practice teaching right so like you know, because again, at that point, you know, DJing is a full-time thing wasn't necessarily on my mind. It was just like, all right, I'm going to go fucking get a job and I'm going to DJ on the weekends or at night or whatever. And, you know, if you're in college, like, for most people, at least if you're like I was, like, your schedule is fucking crazy. Like, you don't have necessarily a set, you know, you have days where you go to classes at the same time or whatever, but, you know, I was, like, working and, like, fucking partying like a motherfucker and, you know, like, <laughs> Just, you don't, you know, when you're young. Being in you're, college. Yeah, when you're in school, you don't have, like, a really set schedule. And I remember being excited, again, to leave college and be like, okay, I'm going to work this 9 to 5, whatever I do. And when I get home at 6 or 7 or whatever, I'm going to I'm gonna use all that time to work on a DJ show. Yeah, man. And that was my schedule. And I remember, and that's basically what happened for a couple of years until I left the, 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 the day days. But um, even, the thing is, even if you have, the point I'm trying to make is even if you have a job that takes up a lot of your day and people have families and just all this other stuff, like make a little bit of time for doing what you love and being creative. And I think just, you know, in general, you're going to live a you know happier, more fulfilling life, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> for sure. I think just consciously just like telling yourself just to do it <laughs> yeah, in your head. Like, and whatever to... reminder, you know, medium, if you will. Yeah, however yeah. you need to... Just like, get it, yeah, I mean... However I mean, you need to condition yourself yeah. to get there, it's, it's important to just get It's there. a habit, for sure. Yeah, yeah no, it's a bit, it becomes habitual. It's, 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 you know, it's practice, it's routine, you know, it's breaking other routines. Um, there was, you know, it's something that, something that I uh, ran across recently is an awesome, uh, I believe it was a TED Talk that I was listening to, um, and the, the guy was talking about concentration. So he asked the entire room, like, um, you know, how many of us have been told to concentrate while we were in school, right? So everybody raises their hand, cool. Everybody's been there, we've all been there. Then he's like, um, how many of you have kids? So a bunch of people raise their hands. And, you know, how many of you have told your kids to concentrate at home when they're doing their homework? Cool, everybody raises their hand. He's like, all right, now think back to when you were in school and you know you were told to concentrate, he's like, how many of you were taught how to concentrate? And the whole room just stays down. And everyone was like, oh shit. And he's like, 
no one, and he's like, the majority of us in society have never been formally taught how to concentrate, but we're always just yelled at to concentrate. He's like, so how are we supposed to know what to concentrate mm -hmm. on? So then he starts talking about focus and thinking about where our focus is. He's like, so think about the idea of like, you know, social media and like how like our phones and how we're attached to our phones. And he's like, he was referencing this, this other Ted talk, which I ended up watching too, is this Buddhist monk. And that gentleman was talking about how it's not a bad thing. Everybody like, oh man, you know, it's such a distraction and this and that, but it's because we create it as a distraction. He's like, we allow ourselves to become, for this to become our, our, our boss, essentially. So when the ping goes off and the ding goes off and you hear your, your, your alert go off, your, whatever you're doing, just you go. And, you, and it's yeah. like, okay, so now allotting time. Now telling yourself, cool, whatever I'm doing right now, whether it's at the day job or, you know, if you're yeah. being creative, whatever it is. And I like Toltec talked about it. Like there was a, a, a natural uh, a source, that, like a rock source that he would put in his, in his room that cu cuts off Wi-Fi signal and all that shit from your phone, you know, for the chakra value of it. So like the concentration aspect was dope because he start, kept talking about like allowing yourself to think about one thing and then just staying there. And then knowing that, like, you know, using your phone as, like, the first means of that. Like, if it goes off, cool. Like, it's just going to be there. Like, if you know you're not expecting a fucking 911 time-sensitive thing, then, like, you could just go back to your phone, essentially, after you're done doing what you do. And recondition your life to, like, finishing out your tasks. That was my biggest issue. Yeah. Just, when I heard that, I was like, yo. Because I get that ADD mind. Like, my shit just goes yeah. everywhere. My creative mind kicks in when I should just be like not being creative sometimes and just like yep. being straightforward mm -hmm. like yo I need to not be creative right now I already know what the fuck I gotta do I, I need to be I can't live my phone I'm sorry man no I know you, yeah. have, <laughs> you have to have your phone no, but that's not my point <laughs> the point is is that utilizing the stuff around you how you should be utilizing it for yourself right so I'm saying like people could have their phone and use it how they're gonna need to not everybody needs it maybe as much as we do you know yeah. like you know Shit, the best thing that happened to me was my phone being stolen from me at a gig, man. Like, I was playing. My phone got stolen from me because I put it down. I still said to somebody within that two-minute thing, my phone got swiped. Yeah, I got home. Fucking whatever. I didn't have a phone for like two weeks. And I was just on the internet just kind of going back and forth like through Facebook and shit. And it was the ah, greatest yes. thing that ever happened to me. You know, you guys remember that. And like, yo, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because when I got this phone... And I bought a new one. I was like, I finally learned where my time goes with my phone. And when I realized how much time I was spending on bullshit, I was like, all right, bet. Yeah, this so, is apps so you can see how long. Yo, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to like. Stop, shut up. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yo, yeah. now it's like now I understand the power of this thing and like why they're really made. Like you yeah. know, like without like you know the government talking. Shit. No, they can hear me talking. They're meant to hold your attention for sure. Of yeah. course, but like your time. you know, shit yeah. like shout out to Tiny Invoice. Like because of that, I got you know. It's like there's little things that now I'm like I'm excited to have this in my hand and I can use it for what I need to use it for and know like yeah. it is a distraction if I choose it to be a distraction. So sorry if anything on, like man. work living this kind of life teaches you how to be more efficient too. Yeah, so much more. Man. Well, right, because also like the biggest thing for that is like. If you work a day job, you have somebody telling you how to allot your time. Mm -hmm. When you don't, it's not you. I remember that was like, the biggest thing that, that a couple of people told me, and then I very quickly realized, like, um, that, like, oh shit, I don't need to really answer to anybody. But really, really quickly, that can spiral into not doing shit for long periods. Oh of time. yeah, totally. Oh uh, fuck yeah, I can see, man. And I still struggle with that to this day. Yo, <laughs> but, no bullshit. Like, you, when you and, and Trentino were out doing stuff as both yeah. years back you guys did some type of interview where you had somebody's crib like you guys were out of town at someone's crib it was in the morning uh, you guys were like eating chips and shit and like I can't remember what it was it was real casual but the guy was interviewing you about like your day to day and I was at my day job listening to this while you guys were on this interview it was like a live feed it was like a video feed it was some DJ home maybe Canada or something in that range 
You guys were out there together. Yeah. This was years back, bro. But this, you're talking about this right now, and you had this conversation. Yeah, yeah. And you were outlining like your mornings, and you were like how you wake up and force yourself to look at your emails because that was your way of starting your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you have no, that's crazy. All of a sudden, no, that's yeah, yes. but it's not already regimented for you. Yes. You well, the, right. The thing is, you can go even deeper than that. Like, since the time you can like think for yourself, like two years old, three years old, every minute of your life, for the most part, is dictated by somebody else. Mm. Right. You have your parents. You it's go guided. To school, it's guided. Right? Yeah. I mean, you have some free time or whatever, but like your day. But even your like, free time is told. Like, okay, now you have some free time. Right. Right. So all of a sudden now, like, you know, I left my day job at I don't know, like twenty. Maybe so. Twenty five years of my life, I had somebody telling me what to do and how to spend my time at all times. All of a sudden, I woke up in the morning and I left my day job and I didn't have that anymore. And that's a big oh, mind fuck. When what? When you left your day gig? How old were you? Uh, twenty three. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I've never left my day gig. <laughs> but I mean, now you're doing okay, respectively. Like when you made the jump from the fucking uh, the other gig. Uh, that I was like. 28? Yeah, it's 28. So I was 30. Yeah. I was 30. Not that long ago. Job, so. I couldn't wait to be free, man. Yo, it, it, it's very liberating, I was done though. fucking around with Yo, it's very liberating, like, though. It more thin really quickly. But all of a sudden, it, it, it hits you like, okay, like, again, like, you can kind of fuck off and not really realizing you're doing it, and all of a sudden, like, days, weeks, months get away from you, yeah. and you yeah. don't really accomplish anything. And, like... That's really quite I know so many people that have tried, especially DJs, yeah, yeah. that try to make that jump, that have a decent corporate gig, they ended up leaving, and they survive for like six months, and then they're back to the fucking grind again, just because they couldn't, at, at that point, it, it doesn't, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, circumstances beyond that for a lot of people, but a big part of working for yourself, no matter whether you're a DJ or, or anything, literally anything, if you leave a company to start your own company. It's the same thing. Now you have to allot your time. Yeah. DJing just like anything else is a business. You're your own boss. Yeah, you're your own boss. All of a sudden, and especially if you have people counting on you, like that's a big fucking responsibility, responsibility to, yeah, all, to on your shoulders all of a sudden. Yeah. So, and that's what it is. Like, th- there's another conversation that power versus responsibility. Like, you know, you, you chase this key to get out of this day job, and like you unlock this world for yourself, and then it's like. You feel you have this power, but it's like, no, nah, there's a big responsibility. And especially like you said, like if you're going to start a company or something like that, yeah. like you don't even have to be a DJ like, yeah. to do uh, that yeah. shit. That, that's real yeah. life. Yeah. 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 Every day. You have to, like, How often do you see people on Shark Tank? You know, like I love that show. Like Shark yeah, Tank's a great that. show. It's, it's fantastic because those dudes are, those people on there are so cutthroat, but they're so honest. And it's, and, and that's what it is. Like you have to, you have to, the, again, break that fear for yourself. You have to break that cycle, it, it, and and doing so is very, very liberating, man. Because like it really, really okay. does take your brain, your your soul to places that you never thought, and your physical being do, to do shit that you never thought possible. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, how many times have we seen all these people that you know do ill shit, like you know walk on hot coals? Like that's real shit. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's a state of mind. You, you gotta respect I mean? the process or whatever there direction you go. Yes. Honestly. Yes, trust the process. Trust, yeah, too. And trust, trust the process yep. too. Exactly. Because yeah, because you're gonna have your ups and downs in whatever the fuck you do, mm-hmm. and yeah, like nothing. You'll you'll never you'll never be on cloud nine forever. So no, yeah. no, no, no. And I feel like the the more you're able to understand that, the the further in you are in the spectrum of like highs and lows. Because I know for me, like I've been able to come inside the spectrum more so like when the highs come i'm not as like oh shit and when the lows come i'm not like oh my god you know i'm turning to kevin hart right away like it doesn't happen like that like i'm i'm a little more balanced Shit's just like okay cool like this is supposed to happen yeah these things are supposed to happen there are ups there are downs to it and like that is life trust set process yes i think that's a really good note to end on that was a fantastic conversation today um you know, a very real conversation and one that a lot of people have. Um, and a lot of these stem from that question. People hit, you know, how, how do you do this? You know, how, how do I make it full time? And it's like, fuck, now I'm just going to say, oh, go listen to this podcast. And this will give you just an insight yeah. on what kind of mental state you have to be in. Because 
we haven't even there, there's so many other things to talk about within that there's sacrifices there's so many other shit but yeah. we don't need to because you know what I mean like that's that's stuff that you know if you embark on that journey you'll you that's know, your own experience exactly <laughs> it's like you know if you take mushrooms everybody has their own trip yeah. so um, once again shout out to all of our listeners all of our subscribers like seriously like we appreciate everybody that tunes in with us and, and you know hits us back with feedback and um these are, you know, these are, this is therapy for us. Like, this is, this is, we're learning shit about ourselves. And, you know, we, we run a company together. So, shout out to these podcasts. Uh, yeah. 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 Wait, where's that air horn? Yeah. I need that air horn to end this shit. Let's uh, make it mad official. Uh, Speaking of phones, right, bust out the phone. Yeah. You yes. know what I'm saying? Let's, All right. Here we go. Let's use the distraction. All right. Here we go. Here, here's how we're going to end it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>